Hi everybody, today we're going to take a look at presentation software and how you can utilize them in the classroom. Here's a video, Death by PowerPoint. It's in Blackboard. I strongly suggest you go watch it. It's about five minutes long. It's absolutely hilarious and we've all been in the situation as both the speaker and the audience members. So highly recommend you go and check this out. And this presentation is also available in Blackboard on the course content page. So the three things we will look at today are why presentation software, presentation design, so how to make it, how to make them effective, and then the do and do nots of presentation software. So we'll begin with why presentation software. Well, the first of all, before we get into that, let's look at the big three that we're talking about, Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Slides, and Prezi. Now, more than likely, you have access to at least one or two of these, if not all three. Maybe you have not created a Prezi account, or maybe you don't have a Gmail account. I highly suggest you go in and do that. Uh, Google Slides is a free application within uh, Google. So if you have a Gmail account, for instance, you have access. So some pros of presentation software. Number one, it provides multiple channels of delivery. So there's many different ways in which you can disseminate information from your presentation. That can be audio clips. It can be video clips. It can be images. It can be GIFs. It can be uh, things that, items that students read in terms of text. There's a million different ways in which you can have multiple channels of delivery. And also that applies to your students as well if they produce presentations. Helps you as the presenter to stay organized and on task, kind of like a little cheat sheet along the way. Uh, one thing we'll talk more a little bit later, just make sure that your presentation keeps you organized, but you're not overloaded with text. But it's a good way to kind of take a little breather and look at the screen and see where you are. You can share presentation software with your students. Maybe it's something that you want them to edit. You can share it in that regard. Maybe it's something you just simply want them to have either via email or maybe you have a class website you can post these there or a YouTube channel. Maybe you record video lectures such as this and you post them and students again, they can go ahead and they can actually create content using presentation software and then share that with the class so they can actually become not just the consumers of the media, but the producers as well. Helps to simplify complex issues, makes it a little bit easier to understand. And then lastly, we can reach a lot of different learners, kind of tying back into, as I mentioned here, with the multiple channels of delivery. Helps us reach all different types of learners. Now, of course, not everything is perfect with presentation software. So the first one is, it can be pretty boring. And I'm sure we've all been in a situation similar to this, either as the teacher or as the audience member. Make sure we try to find ways to engage our audience. There are uh, different technologies such as Poll Everywhere, which you can incorporate and actually embed right into Google Slides, for instance, Microsoft PowerPoint and Prezi, that allows your students to conduct polls, for instance, or your audience to conduct polls, or maybe answers to specific questions that you would like to ask right in the Google Slide. Uh, or PowerPoint, as I mentioned, it's really, really nice. So try to find ways to engage with your audience so it's not so boring. We've all been in a situation where technology just doesn't work. We can't get a video to load, or maybe our internet crashes out, or our formatting is totally different when we go from one computer at home and then we come to work and go to school to teach, and all of a sudden, it doesn't look the same. The fonts are all messed up. That would be an example of a technical issue. A lot of times, especially at the K-12 level, one thing that we struggle with is the time for development. So having that prep period, those shortened prep periods that are maybe you give me, only giving 45, 50 minutes to prepare and you have a bunch of other things that you need to do. And technology oftentimes is front loaded. So it can take time to develop and not just that, but time for practice as well. So when we are actually in the classroom, how much time do we utilize when we are presenting and doing this? Sometimes it takes up and chews up a little bit more time than we thought when we were actually making uh, our presentation. So now we're going to take a look at presentation design. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that you're speaking and the outline is essentially just on your slides. We don't want to keep repeating things over and over again. We don't want to read from our slides, certainly, and we don't want to turn our back to the audience. We'll talk more about that here in a second. One thing we want to try to do is follow the one by six by six rule. And essentially, it's very simple. No more than six bullet points per slide and try to keep those bullet points to six words or less. As you see here on the right, have only one idea per slide. Don't try to mix a bunch of stuff or jam a bunch of text on there. Nobody's going to read it anyway. So have, like I said, six bullet points, six words per bullet point 
it's a really good rule of thumb. I've seen some with seven and seven, so you can maybe go that way. But try to avoid especially a lot of two and three line bullet points. That's just not good for anybody. Font selection, make sure your heading, so what's up top here, where it says font selection is no less than about 36 to 40. You can go a little bit higher, uh, but you want to make sure you can differentiate between the, the subtext at 24 to 32, generally in here. Sometimes I'll go 18. Uh, you'll see on the slides, like when I had the images to represent things with the pros and the cons, I usually use about an 18 point font on that. Uh, so make sure you do that. Helps you again stay organized a little bit. Keep it simple. We don't want to have a bunch of colors. A, it doesn't look good, but B, it just will consume your time and you'll have an hour spent. And same thing with your students. Make sure you tell your students this when they're making these, that they don't worry about that stuff. That's something they can go back and fix at the end because they'll drain an entire class period just picking out fonts and backgrounds. So make sure that the, the text is also easily readable, right? We don't want to bleed into the background that doesn't look good. Make sure your fonts are consistent. The last thing you want to do is have 10 different fonts. Again, these are the types of things that just suck time. Make sure your font is not too small and take into consideration sometimes what looks big on a computer screen or looks good on a computer screen related to, ca to contrast does not look good on a projector in front of a classroom. So make sure you pay attention to those fonts. And again, avoid the fancy stuff. You don't need to do that. It just it's, there's no reason for that. Here's some effective fonts here for you here on the right. Arial is nice. It's a default Times New Roman. And Google Slides, I like to use Oswald as another one. Uh, and then you have your ineffective slides. Try to stay away from especially anything that's handwritten or this old kind of fancy cursive writing or old English writing, for instance. Try to avoid that. If it's one thing where you have a slide that's kind of got a theme or something to it, that's okay. But when it's consistent and you're trying to deliver information, it's not that good. So backgrounds, make sure your backgrounds are consistent. You can change them for specific topics to kind of keep with the theme if you would like. But the last thing you want to do, and I have it highlighted here, is avoid text blending into the background. So an example of that is this. First of all, the, the background is just way too busy, but look at how this white font tends to kind of bleed in here, right? You have all these different colors going in the background. It's just too much. It's too cluttered. It's, it hurts the eyes. And if you're doing this slide after slide after slide, it's not going to be very visually appealing for your audience, and unfortunately, they will tune out. Make sure in your charts, especially as you get more involved with demonstrating graphics or times uh, change over time, for instance, or mathematics, statistics, make sure you have good effective visuals. So charts, statistics, a sequential order, a cause and effect chart, for instance, graphic organizers work well. Pick about the type of graph that you would like to show. Is it going to be a bar graph? Again, is it going to change or show change over time? The increase or decrease in divorce rates or the stock market, things of that nature, air pollution and things of that nature. Uh, if you're going to have any type of drawing or photograph or map, awesome. Again, leave it up there. And we're going to talk more here in a second, but make sure you explain what everything is. What do you want the audience to pay attention to when they're looking at the chart? Give them time to look at it, analyze it, and decipher what it is that's important, and then kind of point them in the right direction. So lastly here, some do's and do nots of presentations. So make sure you introduce and explain the visuals as I just mentioned. It's extremely important that you do that. Leave it up long enough and then remove not just the visuals but slides when you're finished. And anytime you put up any sort of image or audio clip or chart, make sure the audience has time to reflect upon that. It's not just here it is and then it's gone off the screen right away and you never come back to it. Take your time, pace yourself, give your audience time to reflect on what they have seen. Don't stand with your back to the audience. I touched on this earlier, but it's extremely important. And this is another reason why you want to avoid a lot of text on, this, on the slides themselves. Because what tends to happen is when we have a lot of text on a slide, we tend to naturally start to gravitate toward that slide and just begin to read because it becomes almost like a crutch for us when we're presenting. So that goes back to that six by six principle. So make sure you're standing there, you're talking to your audience, you're engaging your audience, almost a conversational style. Walk around the room. Don't be afraid to utilize the space. Be careful of where you're standing because sometimes, especially students, if they're on a far side or they're right in front, they might have a hard time they can't see through you. So maybe they're block, you're blocking something and you're talking about a map or a chart 
and they miss out on that. So make sure you recognize it. You have to move around and make sure that your students can always view the screen. So again, don't leave up blank slides or just slides with stuff on it and you're not talking about it. Overuse of text and images and don't use anything handwritten because it usually comes across pretty sloppy. And last but last, but certainly not least, always check your spelling, always check your grammar, make sure it's correct, your punctuation is correct, your words are spelled right, they're capitalized correctly. Remember, you're modeling behavior for students. And anytime you have a student that will present, for instance, a presentation for a grade, more than likely part of their rubric and their score and evaluation is going to be grammar, spelling, and things of that nature. And then have something backed up in case that's the day the power goes out at the school and you can't put on the presentation or the Wi-Fi is out, something of that nature. And then finally, be wary. Make sure that you utilize art to illustrate points, kind of like I did at the beginning of this presentation with the graphics or the images that went along with, for instance, the benefits, the pros and the cons of presentations. That does a nice job of giving the students a non-linguistic representation or an image that they can help associate with that specific content. Don't go overboard. Don't put in a million clips with things flying in all over the place and sounds and bells ringing and wheels, tires screeching and all that. You don't need to have that in any presentation. Maybe once, okay, but when it's every slide, it just becomes a little bit ridiculous. The words spinning around and coming down out of the screen. Just make it simple. Make it consistent. Use visuals that make sense, that support what it is that you're saying. Don't leave students more confused than they were before. And then lastly here, avoid the overuse of transition effects. You see this often, this kind of ties back into the clip art and the item spinning. You have a slide that will fade out, then a dissolve, then a peel off, and then a flip and all these things. Again, just don't even spend your time worrying about that because it's gonna take up tons and tons of time that you have. And if you only have 45 minutes to make a presentation, you can't spend 15 of it, 20 of it, deciding between fonts and transitions. Now sometimes you will put transition effects into slides to serve a specific purpose, that's fine. But this is the, every slide is something totally different. And lastly, again, here's some resources you can find. Please remember you can find this presentation in Blackboard. So when you open up the presentation in Blackboard, you'll be able to actually go in here and access these resources for presentations, some templates for you, some different activities and different ways in which you can use Google Slides, some nonlinear presentations or flashcards, for instance. So just some different ways that you can utilize and incorporate presentation software into your classroom. Hopefully you found this presentation to be worthwhile and found some new tricks and tools that you can actually go and then incorporate into your classroom. So thanks for watching and I hope to see what you're up to soon.